Tonight, police, police at Cornell University are standing guard over the campus's Jewish center after threats against Jewish students have been made. Threats so violent and so graphic that the White House and the FBI are now tracking them and doing so closely. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, of course, the nation's highest ranking Jewish elected official, addressed this matter on the Senate floor earlier today. The incident targeting Cornell's Jewish community is utterly revolting, but unfortunately, it was not an isolated occurrence. Across the country, on campuses and public spaces, the ancient poison of anti-Semitism has found new life. These incidents of hate are not just spiking, but also spreading to other corners of the world. CNN's Nick Watt takes a closer look. A scuffle at Tulane after a pro-Palestinian demonstrator tried to burn an Israeli flag. At Cornell, Jews were threatened with death and called pigs in an online forum Saturday, according to the Cornell Daily Sun. No one should be afraid to walk from their dorm or their dining hall to a classroom. But that's the reality. Another post read, going to shoot up 104 West. That's the address of the College Center for Jewish Living and the Kosher Dining Hall. We will not tolerate anti-Semitism on this campus. There's no place for hate in America, and we condemn any anti-Semitic threat or incident in the strongest, in the strongest terms. To the students at Cornell, and on campuses across the country. We're tracking these threats closely. At George Washington University, glory to our martyrs among the messages projected on a library wall. Celebrating the individuals who murdered and massacred Israeli civilians. And it's not just college campuses. Slurs painted on a building in Beverly Hills where a Holocaust survivor and her daughter live. Anytime someone hates you, it hurts. A Florida congressman posted Saturday, the temple I belong to was targeted by five people wearing ski masks and shouting, kill the Jews, as congregants left. This has gone into a horrible place that reminds the Jewish community, quite frankly, uh, of the reason why Israel was created in the first place. Anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. are up nearly 400 percent since the Hamas terror attacks of October 7th, according to preliminary data just released from the ADL. And let's keep in mind that prior to October 7th, we had already seen the highest number of anti-Jewish acts in America that the ADL had ever tracked in the last you know, 45 years. Quite frankly, there's there are very few corners of the world right now uh, in which you won't see that sort of craziness. Different levels, of course, but it's everywhere. Today in Paris, four Jewish educational institutes received bomb threats. In China, normally strict state censors appear to be allowing extremist anti-Semitic posts online. <laughs> And in southern Russia, a mob, some carrying anti-Semitic signs, broke into an airport Sunday apparently to meet a flight from Tel Aviv. That was an angry mob that broke through security at an airport looking for Jews. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they were not looking to have a robust foreign policy conversation. At least 10 people were injured, say local officials. The airport had to close. Flights from Israel are now being diverted elsewhere. Now, after watching that video, one U.S. State Department official said it looked like a pogrom to me. Today, back home in the U.S., the White House announced measures to try and keep Jewish students safe on American college campuses. You know, this feels different. I was speaking to a Jewish friend of mine just this afternoon who said that in all of her years, she's never felt physically afraid, but now she does. Hmm. Caitlin? It's hard to hear that. Nick Watt, thank you for that great report. And for more perspective on what we are seeing, I want to bring in Yair Rosenberg, a Jewish American journalist for The Atlantic, Atlantic who has written extensively about the intersection of politics, of culture, and religion. I mean, I know that you're no stranger. You have to even confront this yourself online. But what do you make of, of just this summary of what we have been seeing play out in the last few days and weeks? Yeah, so Caitlin, the, the thing about this is that it's not surprising. It's shocking, but not surprising, because 
every time Israel engages in any form of military conflict. We see these sorts of spikes around the world. Scholars have done some research, and you can find that this happens around the world, particularly in Europe um, and also in the Middle East. Um, and it goes way back, you know, this sort of instinct that I'm upset about what some Jews are doing somewhere in the world. It might be thousands of miles away, and so I'm going to take it out on Jews nearby. Right? That instinct is very, very old and much older than Israel, which was founded in 1948. Um, you can think of one of the oldest anti-Semitic libels, you know, the notion that the Jews killed Jesus, which was something that allegedly happened in the Middle East, but led to centuries of persecution of Jews in places like Europe, where totally different people far, far away. And so when people today firebomb a synagogue in Berlin, which is a thing that's happened, mm -hmm. right, or they send bomb friends to synagogues in Paris, they're actually going along a very well-trodden path of holding all Jews accountable for what any other Jew might do anywhere else in the world. Um, and this is how bigots and racists think of minority groups, right? We've seen that happen to, you know, say, Muslims in North America when people are upset about events in the Middle East and they, they go and attack a mosque in Canada. Um, this is the way that bigots construct minority groups. Yeah. And it's how they treat them. But the way we're seeing it play out on campuses, I mean, what happened <clears throat> at Cornell and the fact that they had to close the kosher dining hall is something that I think, I was just speaking to people yesterday about this. I mean, how do you make of how school leaders, how administrators on these campuses are handling this? Are they, do you think they're even coming close to addressing it? So I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. I think some, you know, school presidents have done a much better job of like being forthrightly in front of this issue and condemning from starting with October 7th and the actual massacre that Hamas perpetrated, which was the worst anti-Jewish violence since the Holocaust and deserve to be condemned. Right. And then up to these incidents, really understanding that when this stuff happens on your campus, you need to address it. And then there are others who sort of have, you know, fumbled the football. I think you saw in Cornell, like they, they reinforced the building with security. And then you had, you know, the governor make a statement with the president of the university, right? right? They really did everything they possibly could to make those Jewish students feel that they were welcomed and that they would be protected, which is basically all you can do in that situation. And we really don't know yet really what happened there. It's an anonymous threat on a forum that's not affiliated specifically with the university. So it really could be anybody who's just trying to mess with Jews. And these are, this is a time when people want to do that. Yeah, and it's working though. It's unsettling students, their families. I mean, Jewish communities all throughout the U.S. I've certainly, you know, personally had many conversations with people who normally would feel very secure, who are now looking over their shoulders and are, are, are concerned because they all know somebody who's dealt with this or that. I also, as a reporter, I hear stories that people might not want to go public with, but they'll tell me about, and I'll hear about them on college campuses and elsewhere, things that people have experienced um, that are happening as a result of events thousands of miles away in the Middle East that people then take out on Jews here. Yeah. Yeah, Eric, thank you for coming in to talk about this uh, obviously really important topic tonight. Thank you for having me. Up ahead, 